Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I think we can start now. Uh, is everything like, uh, is the presentation being displayed or not? Are you hearing me well or is, it, is the sound really reduced? Is the volume reduced? Because I can like, I can change it if... Everything is perfect. Okay, great, perfect. So good evening, everyone. Uh, today we're going to talk about the paper, Attention is all you need. Uh, today we are going to try to finish this paper and to sum up the concepts that were uh, described in this paper. So last time we talked and defined uh, most of the architecture, the transformer architecture, and then um, okay, we talked about the we talked about uh, we reviewed RNNs first, and then we talked about the sequence to sequence uh, transaction models, and then we defined transformers. Uh, I think we defined the, the overall architecture, but we didn't go into, into details on it. We talked about the self-attention, but we skimmed and we skimmed the multi-had self-attention and we stopped there, right? Okay, yes, okay, great. Okay, so uh, is anyone here need a review on the recurrent now networks or the uh, the sequence to sequence models. Okay, so I planned uh, this program for today. We're gonna review the general architecture of the transformers, and then we're gonna talk about positional encoding because this step is important in the architecture and we need to talk about it. And then we're gonna talk about how they train their model and the results they obtain uh, by varying different hyperparameters in the models, etc. Okay, so uh, I think I'm gonna switch to the paper and uh, make it bigger. Okay, maybe it's too much bigger. Okay, great. Okay, so basically, this is the architecture of the transformer. So, what do we have? We know that the transformer, as they said, is a transduction model. So by transduction model, they mean sequence to sequence model. And by sequence to sequence model, we mean the models that have an encoder and then a decoder. So the models that uh, have as input a string and then output a string as well. Okay, so we agree on this. And then we have the encoder. So the encoder is on the left. I don't know if you're seeing the mouse or not. Okay, tell me if you're seeing the mouse or not. No, we can't see it. Okay, maybe I need to share the whole screen so that you can see it, right? Okay. Okay, just give me a second. I'm gonna try to... Okay, maybe I can do this. Okay, do you now see the mouse? Uh, yes, we do, yes. Okay, great. Okay, so this is the overall architecture of the transformer. So we have, this is the encoder, and then this is the decoder. And the encoder layer is uh, n times, is done n times. So we have, uh, and n equal to six in the baseline model they present. So we have like six layers of Multi-hat, norm, feed-forward, norm. Multi-hat, norm, feed-forward, norm. Feed-hat, et cetera. So we have six of them. And we have six of, of, uh, of the decoder layers as well. So if we, are, uh, if we like go through the architecture as a whole, we have the inputs. We know that the inputs are certain strings. For example, uh, a sentence, I have a dog. And then we uh, output the embeddings of the input words. So the embeddings are basically some vectors that correspond to the words. So I becomes a vector. Uh, I have a dog, have becomes a vector, and dog becomes a vector as well. And then we have the positional encoding. We didn't talk about it yet, so let's keep it for now. And then we have the multi-head attention. And we, what we said is that the attention will help us focus on the word that will uh, get us the the gray, the good output. Okay, I, I'm saying, 
uh, n'importe quoi. <laughs> okay, so maybe the illustrated uh, version of it will help us understand it better. So where is it? Where is it? Um, okay. Uh, Okay, here they are detailing the self-attention. And here we have, for example, this example is given by Google. So the animal didn't cross the street because it was too tired. And this it, this it refer, refers to the animal. And we know that because we know how uh, we do read and comprehension easily. But the machine will uh, wonder if it refers to the street or the animal. So attention is a mechanism that will help the, the machine understand that the animal have a lot of uh, reference in it than the street, for example. Okay, so we have some attention here and then we have add normalization and then we have a feed forward and add normalization. Okay, then the output of the encoder so the output of the six layer uh, of the encoder will go to the multi-head attention in the decoder. But then we have a, a multi-head attention, a mask, a mask multi-head attention in the out uh, in the decoder at first. And what this the mask multi-head attention is doing, it is working on the output embedding so it's working on the output so for example i'm translating i have a dog in arabic so i'm uh, doing uh, for the inputs it's simple i have a dog will go to the encoder and then i have a certain vectors as outputs okay this is for the encoder uh, layers but then the uh, the output in uh, the uh, the output will be for example if i have a dog uh, this is the sentence then i will have okay in arabic it's uh, a little different because like yes Your maybe we'll do it in yeah maybe we'll do it in french so that we can understand so i will be uh je uh, and then we're going to add je in the outputs and make the output embeddings and then the masked multi-hat attention and then the normalization. And then for this multi-hat attention, we're going to have the output of je and the output of the, all the input. So we are going to have I have a dog and je. And then I will try to uh, make uh, je, donc uh, ai. Okay. So uh, this is why they are shifted right, because all the output, uh, we are talking about the output previous than the current output we're trying to compute. And why were mask, uh, why is it a masked multi-head attention? It is because when all the, all the weights of the, the, pre, the, the future outputs are masked. So they are uh, set into minus minus infinity. I think it's minus infinity. Yes, it's somewhere right here. Okay. So they are uh, setting the weight and all of it uh, to minus infinity so that it cannot affect the results. Okay. And then a multi-head uh, on the result of the encoder and the result of the previous outputs. And then a feed forward, and finally a linear layer. So what they do in this linear layer, they're going to have like uh, an array, uh, and the length of this array is the number of words that I have in the uh, targeted language. So for example, if I'm working uh, with French, I, if I'm translating uh, from English to French, and in my data set, I have uh, 30,000 30, words in French, I will have an array of length 30,000. And then I will try to have the probability in this array of each word. So is it is this word I, uh, je, or a, or uh, chien, etc. So I think this is the overall architecture. I don't know if I uh said like uh, said it in a messy way so if you have any question please ask it now 
so that we can go to the details of the multi-head attention and the positional encoding. Tell me if you have any question. Uh, Hajar. Yes. Since you are working with transformers, I think it's a very big model. So will we suffer from the vanishing gradient or not? Vanishing gradients. Okay. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I don't think so. We have a, I agree with you that we have a lot of parameters that we're learning. And the model is six layers encoder and six layers decoder. But then yes. I, I believe that the model is not that big because there are, there are models that are way bigger than this. Uh, I don't think we're suffering from vanishing gradients if we put the right hyperparameters to train it. Yeah, I see. I thought it was uh, too big. No, so 12 uh, layers isn't that big, I think. Yeah, 12 layers, but I agree with you. There are a lot of parameters. Like we have the way, the match, uh, the, the query mattress, the key mattress, and the, the key values, yeah. yes. But, but then I think this is not too big to suffer from vanishing gradients if we put the right <laughs> hyperparameters. Okay, we're fine, so. Yes. Uh, uh, in the paper, they are not talking about the vanishing gradient. Of the, so this is like uh, this is this wasn't a problem for them and in, in training. Okay. okay. Thank you. I see. Thank you. No problem. Okay. So I think that's the overall architecture, and we can go and talk about the multi-head attention. Do you agree, or do you have any other question? Please, come on. Ask ask me questions, please. Okay, maybe we can go and go ahead and talk about the multi head attention. Tell me yes, no. Uh... Yes, yes, of course. Okay, yes. okay, <laughs> okay. So. I think for the multi hat attention, it will be better to go to Jalamar blog, which is a really incredible illustrations of the, in, the transformer. So basically, we're going to the self attention. So in the self attention that we talked about, we have the query mattress, the key mattress and the value mattress, the query and the key. So these are mattresses that uh, of weights. So when we talk about weights in uh, machine learning or in deep learning, you automatically think of learnable parameters. So these uh, these parameters will be trained. Okay. So we're going to learn the weights of the uh, the query matrix, the weights of the key matrix, and the weights of the value matrix. So here, for example, we have. Let me. Okay. This. Illustration is better. So here, for example, we have a sentence which is thinking machines. So we have their embeddings, the embedding of thinking, the embedding of machines, x1 and x2. And then we multiply x1 here. We multiply x1 by the three matrices. So we're going to have q1, q, k1, and v1. So these are vectors of the query, the key, and the value. OK. Then to get the score of the word, so what we do is that we're going to multiply the query by the keys of all the words in the input sentence. So here we have query one multiplied by K1 and query one multiplied by K2. Why we're doing this? Because we want to know how much of the word two is referenced in the word one. So this is the score. So this uh, this will help us to, uh, for example, get that it in that sentence was about the animal and not the street. And then we're going to divide the score by eight. So this is for, uh, as mentioned in the paper, this is for gradient purposes because the gradient was too small. Mm -mm 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 -mm. One. 
No, the, the gradient was uh, too large. Okay. Yeah, if we don't okay, okay. normalize, they will yeah. be too large. In the soft yeah. map, uh, for for big uh, for big numbers, we have we have a small uh, tangent. Yeah, right. Okay, so the gradients were too large and they used a scaling factor of square root of dk. Okay, okay, and then they apply the softmax to this, uh, to the q multiplied by k divided by the square root of dk. So and then they up, they obtain a probability or a score that determines how much each word will be expressed at this position. Okay. So once they have the softmax, they multiply this softmax by the value vector, and they add all the value vectors to obtain an. Uh, the final vector that would express the the first the first word, for example, so z one. So uh, okay, okay. Uh, I'm thinking about interpretability. So if we are looking at v one, v two, v three, etc., we can interpret that uh, v one is more likely to be in position one, and v two has a, a slightly express the position one, but it's not that much. So we can interpret our values at v1 and v2, but then when we add them, our model is no longer interpretable. OK, OK. So this was just a thing in, OK, OK. OK, let's go to defining the multi-hat attention. So uh, in the self-attention, the final uh, the final vectors we're obtaining are the z1, z2, etc. So this is a matrix that we call z. Okay. The problem with this uh, with this yeah with the problem with this uh, self-attention layer when we apply just one head just one time we apply the self-attention, we're gonna learn these uh, weight matrix uh, weight uh, yeah these matrices the query the key and the value matrices and then we're going we're going to learn them to put higher values to the word itself so uh yeah so thinking will always have a higher value and all the other words we're gonna have less value and uh, a, a higher score, okay, sorry, a higher score, and all the other words we're gonna have a, a, a more, yeah, a less, uh, yeah, a less score. But this is uh, this is a problem when we want, for example, to uh, to know what it refers to, and we want to have like not it is referred to it. So thinking is not only about thinking, but maybe another word will refer to thinking as well in the sentence. So for this, they use the multi-head attention. And uh, basically, it is applying the, the self-attention multiple times. So we will have multiple weight matrices of the queries, the keys, and the values. So we'll have multiple of them. And then each one of them will be multiplied. So for example, here we have W0Q, W1Q, and then we multiply X by W1Q and by W0Q. And we obtain different vectors for Q for the same word. And then we obtain different values for Z for the same word also. So, and then the next step is to multiply all these values that we obtained from uh, Z0, Z1, etc. We, we multiply them by a weight matrix, a giant weight matrix, uh, w, -O, w O. So, O, I think it refers to the output. I, I believe it refers to the output. Okay, so W output. And then we multiply all these by uh, WO to obtain a single vector for each word. So basically, this is the multi hat attention. OK, do you have any question? Uh, I have one question. Yes, go ahead. Well, let's say we have uh, eight uh, heads. So yes. we have 
eight matrices of uh, queries and values and uh, keys, okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. So the only difference uh, between them is in the beginning because they initialize randomly, right? Uh, they are randomly initialized. Yes, yes. So after the training, well, mm -hmm. as far as I know, after the training, won't they have the same weights? No, no, they won't. They won't converge to the same uh, minimum. Yeah, that's why. That's what I mean. That's why they, they, they there is uh, a difference between them, and there is difference between the results we're going to obtain. Hajar, there is an, an illustration here. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. This one. So in this illustration, what we have, we have the color in uh, in orange is a one hat and the color in uh, green is another hat. So we're trying to figure out it refers to what. And so one hat think that the it refers to the animal and another hat think that it refers to tired. Okay, so this is an example of what you were going, what you're saying, Nazim. But uh, my question is that, why do we have different results? Uh, as you said, one of the reasons is the random initialization. Uh, so that's it. That's the only difference between them. Uh, let me think. Since we have a lot of parameters, I don't think that we can inter interpret it. Because after this, we will normalize them and multiply them by, by the, uh, the big May, uh, the big matrix, which is W O, so I don't think that we can interpret them here. Yeah, but the question was if the the uh, the only difference between the hats is the random initialization, and I believe it's yes. And we have a lot of matrices with a lot of values, so I believe this is the, think, the reason. I don't think so. If we if we initialize them all. To the same, uh, to the same value. I don't think that that they will have the same values after training. Uh, yes, this is, is a very that? good idea. I think I will try it. We will try to have different, well, eight heads with the same uh, weights at the beginning, and we will train them to see if they will have the same or not. Okay. I'm trying to think mathematically first before trying because I believe that we're reducing the same amount each time to update the weights. But why Mohammed is saying that it's different? Please enlighten us. Come on. Can you observe the multiplication button? Est-ce que la classe la différence va être connue à l'implémentation, la la multiplication qui multiplie pas forcément. Non, non. Mais ok, mais le wish nous y a une multiplie différent. Attends, attends, tu veux? Ok. On te la self attention. Allez. Par exemple, non, non. Par exemple, W0. W0, tu n'as qu'un mini chalizian. Uh, w o uh, w o will be multiplied by all the z zero z one z two z three etc. Ah, uh, okay, now you found it. Yeah, let's okay, now you found it. Parce que هذه qui تكون initialisée, اسمع نقول لي ده سيسا. هذه qui تكون initialisée randomly. Donc, qui يحسب le gradient تاع اللي راح يروح ينقص W1 ولا اللي راح ينقص W0 ما راحش يجيني كيف كيف. مش راح يجي كيف كيف، هذه خمس فيها بصح كون نديروهم كون initialisées ثاني كان كيف كيف. قلبي عاود هابطي شوف دقيقة. <laughs> okay, maybe we're going to think about it. Okay. 
So where were we? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So I think we are we are done with the multi hat attention. So basically, we ha we are having our sentence thinking machines, and then we are gonna get the embeddings of each word, and then we multiply these embeddings by the multiple matrices key, query key and values multiple matrices so we have the for in the baseline transformer we have eight heads and then we calculate the attention by multiplying the query vector by the key vector and then we can get the value uh, yes we can get the z0 by multiplying the softmax by the value and then we multiply all the z's by the w output to get the final uh, z matrix uh is everything clear except the fact that they are changing when the heads are changing are multiple okay is everything clear uh yes okay for me yes yes okay okay now we're going to positional encoding so I'm going here, okay. So we're here in the full architecture and we're applying positional encoding just to the embeddings. So we have the vectors of each word and we add them another vector and this vector will represent the position. Why we do that? Because in recurrent neural network, we have an order in which the words are, in, uh, are uh, yeah, are, going through the the model so the first word is going through the model and then the second word and then the third word etc but then in the transformer we're doing that in parallel so we have all the words that are entering the model at one time and we need something to recognize the position of the word in the sentence so they proposed uh yep 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 where is it? Okay, so they propose uh, special functions that interpret different frequencies in the the word index in the sentence to add uh, the to define the positional embedding. So, so th this is a simple illustration. We have, for, for example, je suis étudiant. We have x1, x2, and x3. And then we add the positional encoding, t1, t2, t3. And we obtain the, uh, the, the embedding with time signal x1, x2, x3. So this is the an, uh, general view of how the positional encoding is applied. But then the vectors are calculated using uh, this function so we have the sin and the cosine and the vectors look somehow like this so we have the so in this in this uh, figure we have each row that represents one positional encoding vector so these are the vectors that are added to the uh, to the embedding of the input okay Okay, okay, okay. And uh, what they said is that they said that they are using the cosine uh, for in the, the, the cosine and the sine in the positional encoding because it gives the advantage of being able to scale to unseen length of the, of sequence. Although I think there are a lot of functions that we can use to encode the positional. Uh, to, to encode the position of the word in a sentence that are more easily coded and uh yeah okay so this is how they are doing it basically so they are adding a vector that represents the position and this vector is calculated by this uh function and it gives like a pretty uh, a pretty view for the position and it's like a round table where the first one is related to the second the first position is related to the second to the third but then not so much to the fourth five, fifth etc okay so basically this is the positional encoding do you have any question
Go on. If you don't have, just say say no so that I can know that you don't have any question and we can go further in the paper. Okay. Okay, great. So I think after the positional encoding, yeah, we didn't talk about the residuals. Okay. Uh, basically, the residuals are when we connect uh, the okay uh, when we connect the input to the output of the next layer. So, for example, here we have the multi-hat attention. We have the input of the multi-hat attention, and then we have this link between the input of the multi-hat attention and the uh, the add and normalization layer. So they link here, and this is a residual connection. Uh, by the way, here they are using either a batch normalization or a layer-wise normalization, and we can discuss them in future papers, I believe. That will be interesting to read. OK, so we are connecting the, the input to the uh, input of the next layer, because this is like uh, in Okay, the residual can the residual connection proves their efficiencies in many in many models, and uh, they started, I believe, in ResNet, which is so uh, uh, a CNN, which is a convolutional neural network. Okay, do you hear me? Yes, yes, we do. Not anymore. Hello. Other than South Korea, it's got Hello. Do you hear me? Yes. OK, I'm really sorry. I had a problem with my computer, and I don't know why. That's OK. OK, I'm sharing the screen, right? Yes. OK, great. Uh, and I don't know the last thing I said. <laughs> what was it? I know I was talking about the residual connections, but then what was the last time uh, the last thing I said? You said that they they were first used in ResNets. Oh, okay. You were you were hearing me that time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Because the computer completely blocked and I wasn't, I didn't know if you were hearing or not. Okay. So, uh, and they were first used in ResNet. Okay. Uh, okay, okay, okay. So they used like a residual connection between all the layers in their uh, model. So here we have a residual connection and then here we have another residual connection. And uh, residual connections like make uh, the model more faithful to the initial data. So we're, we're trying to uh, increase the input relation with the results of the, each layer. So this is uh, a way to increase the accuracy of the model. Okay. So this was about residual connections. 
And then the applications, I believe we talked about them. Oh, no, no, there is a great idea here. Okay, so uh, another thing they are talking about is that in this multi-head attention, uh, you're seeing the mouse, right? Yes, we do. Okay, in this multi-head attention, the query is, uh, is random. But then the key and the values are obtained from the, uh, the, the results of the encoder. So here we don't have like, uh, we don't have much to, to train. We have just the query matrices and the key and value matrices are obtained from the results of the encoder. Okay. So this is an important thing to notice in the architecture of the transformer. Okay, and then, so this, we talked about it, and then here, okay. So this is basically ReLU of the, so we have like two layers in the fully connected neural network in the last part, and we apply a ReLU between the two layers, okay. And then positional encoding, we talked about it. Embeddings and softmax, yeah, we talked about it. Okay, so an interesting thing to talk about is why self-attention? So in this section, they are basically telling us why this paper is important. So the first thing that you need to, uh, yeah, that you need to keep in mind is that recurrent neural networks in, uh, have a lot, a lot of more operations than the transformer. This is first. The second thing is that with recurrent neural networks, we cannot uh, parallelize our model. And with transformer, we can like put all the inputs at one time. And then in the decoder, we are uh, having as kind of one at a time because we're having the output also. So we can parallelize this encoder uh, by getting all the inputs at one time. And then they are comparing also their model with the, the yeah, here, with the convolutional neural networks and the convolutional use in sec to sec models. And they said that convolution would be just as good in terms of the path length between points uh, as they are doing in the with the transformer, but they are more expensive to train. So we have a lot of a lot more uh, kernels, a lot more uh, layers to train, etc. And uh, yeah, and then uh, the transformer are more easy to interpret and i believe this is because of the self attention like if we obtain just the uh, the value yeah the value multiplied by the the value multiplied by the softmax we can easily interpret that this uh this it for example is more related to this and not to the, that word etc okay so I believe this is what they were talking about. And uh, okay, they, yeah, and here they are talking, when they are talking about convolution, they are like cited that even if we are comparing the transformer with the best possible convolution at that time, and we have the dilated convolution and the separable convolution, the separable convolution I believe we're gonna read mobile net at some point, so we're gonna define them. And the deleted, uh, dilated uh, convolutions are just simple convolution with wider kernels. Maybe you can look for them here. Dilated convolution, and then just to get an image of them, yeah, here. So this is a three by three kernels applied by a simple convolution that we know. And then with the dilated convolution, the kernel is uh, wider by two or by three, etc. So this is a way to obtain more accurate models and more efficient in terms of uh, yeah, in terms of uh, faster models, etc. Okay. So I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. We can go and talk about the training. Uh, do you have any question until now?
No. No, thank you. Okay. Okay, so the training. <laughs> so they trained their model in two different data sets. They trained it with uh, English German data sets and with English French data set. And they uh, used like English French data set was much bigger than the, the English German data set. Okay, so this is just to tell us what data they are using and then this is sorry uh this is to tell us the hardware they're use, using okay this is not a problem and here's steps i had problems to understand what steps mean because they are saying we trained the base models for a total of 100,000 steps or 12 hours so steps i i thought it was epochs at the in the first time but then i think it's mini batches so it's not just one epoch but the the training of a mini batch okay and then for the optimizer they are using atom optimizer with some uh high parameters okay this high parameters is weird because we're usually like using 0 0.99 but then they are using here 98 so maybe there is uh, maybe there they they just did some experimentation and find that this was the best okay so with atom optimizer uh, optimizer basically what we're doing is that the tra uh, the learning rate is decreasing over time but then with this formula they are using the learning rate is first increasing linearly for the first uh, steps and then decreasing after uh after uh, some time for after some steps okay regularization in regularization they are using dropout and they said they are using dropout okay where is the architecture okay they're using dropout here at the beginning of uh, just after the input embedding, just after the embeddings. And uh, do you know what is dropout? Do you know what dropout is? Yes. Okay. Uh, I don't. Okay. Basically, dropout is when you're uh, imagine a neural network, a fully connected neural network, and when I'm training that fully connected neural network, I say that, uh, for example, this weight and this weight, I'm not going to update them for this uh, for this epoch. So I drop some weights from being updated in this epoch, and. Uh, Many of the time they're using like uh, a probability. So I'm saying 25% of the uh, weights are not updated in each epoch. But then the 25% are not always the same. So these uh, in the first epoch, I will drop some of them and then the, ne uh, the next epoch I will, drop, I will drop others. So basically this is dropout. Okay, thank you. I get it. Okay. okay. Perfect. And dropout is used because uh, to handle the problem of uh, overfitting and we don't want our weights to be too much trained. So that's why we're using dropout. Okay. Uh, yes, I was here. And then they are using another regularization method, which is label smoothing. Okay. Label smoothing is used both for overfitting and overconfidence. Uh, do you know what is overconfidence? Okay, uh, I will try to define it. So basically, an overconfident model is when uh, the model gives us like 90% uh, of accuracy in the overall test set, but then at one, uh, in one image, for example, the model will give us, I'm not really sure, I'm sure at 60%. Yeah. So this is an overconfident model. So 
this is not really great. This is not great at all because we want when the accuracy is 90 percent, uh, the model is sure of all the results in all the images. I don't know if you understood me or not. So if you don't, please tell me. So, OK. <laughs> Nazim, I'm not sure. I'm okay. I'm okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Great. Uh, so this is overconfidence, and one way to handle overconfidence is to use label smoothing. And a label smoothing is when we're uh, it's a, f uh, a function that we're going to use to decrease. The, the learning over the learning over yeah decrease the learning in uh, while training the model okay and they said that uh, this like this sentence is really weird this hurts perplexity so perplexity is uh, an error metric for language modeling language modeling is the task to predict the next word in the sentence okay so this hurts perplexity as the model learns to be more unsure but improves accuracy and blue score so blue score is a classification mod, a classification error metric yeah so they did that just to improve the accuracy without the model and with with the model being unsure so this is weird Okay. Okay, I think the last thing we're going to do is that we're going to analyze this table and this table and we will be done with the transformers. Okay, so the first table is defining the overall scores they obtained on the different uh, benchmarks, which are English to German and English to French. Okay, so they are comparing it with a lot of other models, including ConfSec to Sec Ensemble, ConfSec to Sec, uh, ByteNet, Deep Attention. Uh, okay, so they are comparing about uh, with a bunch of other models, and they have the Transformer Base model and the Transformer Big model. So the transformer big model is, of course, so uh, with blue, the higher, the greater, okay? So 28 is better than all of this, and 41 is better than all of this. All, okay, we have this one that's make, okay, great results as well. And the weird thing is that with the base model in English to German data set, they are doing better but in English to French, they are doing worse than every other model, which is weird. But at the same time, the training cost is much, much less. Uh, yeah, it's more efficient than all of the other models. Yeah. And this is the aim of this paper, actually. They are trying to build a model that is faster than all of the other ones. And flops is the number of uh, floating point operations, OK? Uh, what does it mean, especially the, the training cost? I don't understand this. Yeah, they are, they are, counting, they are counting the number of uh, floating point operation in the model. Yes, OK. Okay, so this is a number of uh, multiplication with floating point or addition, etc. All the operations with floating points. Basically, they are on multiplication normally, yeah. Uh, there is like a controversy there are, uh, in, uh, yeah, in counting the training cost with the flops, but overall, it's a good metric, but then there are some uh, papers that calculate the, uh, the real latency on the hardware, uh, but they are working more on the hardware optimization, etc. So the flops is good. Okay. 
So this is basically to say our model is better in translation than any other model, okay? <laughs> and then model variation, I think it's good to see that. Okay. Okay, so in this, uh, in this table, what do we have? We have the N, which are the number of layers in the decoder and encoder. We have the dimension of the model, the dimension of F, of uh, the fully connected uh, layer, and then we have the number of heads, the DK, DV, uh, the probability of dropout, the epsilon LS, which is for a label smoothing, and we have the training steps. And we have two metrics, which are the perplexity and the blue metric. Okay, so from A, we are changing the number of heads, but keeping the same number of parameters. And uh, they notice that when changing, when increasing the number of heads, so eight is better than one, but then 32 is not better than eight. So we have like a certain uh, threshold that is not uh, good to, uh, yeah, to reach. Okay. And then basically in the other, I think it's in B and C, the, the idea is bigger the model is, bigger the uh, more, better it is. Okay. So, and then here they are changing slightly the parameters of the regularization methods to see which one is better. Okay. Uh, I think that's it. Do you have any question? Uh, well, I understood the how it works, the transformer, but I have one single question. <laughs> From where did the idea come? Like, it, it's genius. <laughs> I, I would like to understand the philosophy behind it. Okay, so just to remind you, when they did this paper, the attention, the self attention exists, existed. So sorry for the noise. I believe they are watching a tennis game. That's why. They're... Okay. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yes, uh, the attention existed. So the idea was to think about something that is parallel is parallelizable, okay, uh, to think about this and to make the training more efficient and the inference also more efficient. So when they thought about it, they think of letting only the self-attention and getting rid of the recurrence, which is the, the idea. When they, think, uh, when they thought about getting rid of the recurrence, I think this is Wow, this is the wow of the paper. Hadar, but they were using before uh, convolutions. Uh, yes, they were using convolutions before. Uh, with convolutions, we don't we don't have uh, recurrence also. Yes, yes. Uh, so uh, ah, yes. So what you want to say is, but when they are um, using but okay. convolutions with convolutions, we don't we don't have. We don't have the attention. They are not uh, interpretable, and and. Uh, no, no. I believe we have the attention in the conf sec to sec. In the conf sec to sec, I believe we have the attention. But the problem is the model is really hard to train with the convolution. We have kernels. We have a lot yeah. of kernels to learn, and we have a lot of weights to learn. So this is the problem with the convolution. Yeah. Yes, so I think they are trying to get the best of both words. So I'm going to get in rid of recurrence, but how can I make this more efficient also? But then also, if I know how they are getting these ideas, I would get one and then write something. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I have one more question. Yes. Is there a higher level meaning of the queries and the values and uh, the keys matrices? Uh, sorry, I didn't understand you. Is there? 
a higher level meaning, like uh, not just mathematically. Is there a meaning of queries and keys and values in the model? Uh, yes, I think. Yes. Uh, Mohammed, do you want to answer? No, I, I think that you should answer. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, no problem. Okay, so I think we talked about them. So, uh, yeah, we the talked about, talk about, about them last time. Okay, but then we do, didn't define them here. We, okay. we, we defined oh, yeah. them, but we didn't uh, talk about. Yeah, no problem. The, I think there is the explanation here, a clear explanation, but I couldn't find it. But okay, no problem. So uh, with the query and the key, so the query and the key are trying to define the score, right? So yes. with the query, we're trying to ask, uh, we're trying to ask the, the importance of that word. And with the key, we're trying to answer the query, I believe. Yes. So let me think. Okay. Sorry. Take your time. Yeah. Because we're multiplying the query with the key to get the score. So basically, the query and the key are uh, trying to. Uh, get us yeah what is relevant on this on this word so we're multiplying q1 by k1 k2 etc so the query is the request so we're we're trying to how much of this query is on this on these keys we're coming we're trying to obtain this score okay so, for example, yeah. how much of the of query one is on K one, K two, etc. And then, when we know that, when we know how much of this word is on all the other keys, we are multiplying this softmax by the value. So, the value is basically, I think, the the input. And the value is the representation of the word. Yeah, the value. How do, and do, uh, the, uh, the dot product is like similarity. So what we're counting here, we're counting the similarity between uh, the queries, like here, uh, Q1, with the keys of all other words. So so here we, we're we're calculating the similarity of this word. For example, in this example, it's uh, the first word, Q1. We're counting the similarity. Uh, it's similarity yeah, to yeah, all okay. the keys. Okay, so we're calculating the similarity between Q1 and all the keys. Yes. And then this similarity I, score is multiplied by V1, which gives us how much of uh, so how much of Q1 is in the key, multiplied by the value, which is a representation of the input. Yes. Yeah, to get how much of the input is on this uh, on this word on this position. Okay, thank you. I get it. Okay, great. Do you have any other question? محمد كانت عندك كيستيون بعدك طفيت نو صراحة نقول لك على عندك بيبر المرة اللي فاتت اللي بارتاجيتيها في الجروب هذيك يس ذا نيكست بيبر اوكي فيرست اسكو راكم في الجروب فيسبوك تاع سكول اوف اي اي يب اوكي جريت سو ام اي ويل شير ذير ذا نيكست بيبر اند ذن اف يو وونت اف يو وونت ات تو بي ذا نيكست بيبر ذن جست press like and if you don't want just tell me in a comment so i shared last time uh, a paper which is an image it's worth yes six, uh, six they use they use the word. they was they use the transformer for image class i've heard before the transformer performed very badly in in images so we'll, we'll read this and 
Sorry, I didn't hear. I said that I have heard that transformers don't perform good on images. Uh, I heard that too, but then uh, here in the abstract, they are saying vision transformer attain excellent results compared to state-of-the-art wow. convolutional networks while requiring substantially fewer computational resources to train, which is huge. And the paper is not yet published. It yes. is still under review. So it would be great to read it, I think. But then if you want BERT, we can read BERT, of course. So just tell me what you want. If you want to read this paper, I, I think I want to read it because of the title. <laughs> An image is worth 16 by 16 words. Uh, but then if you want to read an, uh, an NLP a paper or BERT or Excel Nats, it's also, uh, it's open to you. Just tell me. I don't have a problem. Okay, then Nazim or Khaled will decide that. That would be great. I'm in. <laughs> Which one? Which one would be great? Uh, the image one. Okay, okay. Okay, don't know. Okay, then we're going to read this one. An image is worth 16 by 16 words. Okay, great. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, do you have any other question or... So if there's a no question, yeah, Thank you. Bye bye.